In the tenderfoot, Ginger had second billing to future huge star Joe E. Brown, and then appeared in a second movie with Brown. Ginger continued her freelancing through the studios in this period, now doing two movies for First National Pictures. First National started in 1917 as an association of independent theater owners, the country's largest theater chain. In 1924, it started producing movies, but was taken over by Warner Brothers in 1928. Warner continued releasing movies under First National until 1936. So, in reality, this was Ginger's first two movies for Warner Brothers. I assume Ginger's relationship with boyfriend Mervyn Leroy helped Ginger in getting these roles, but she was rising in her career by her own merits, and like all the other studios, Warner wanted to lock Ginger in for a long-term contract. Brown was in the top moneymaker poll from 1932 to 1937, reaching fifth in 1936. After that, he was a character actor, probably best remembered for his role in Some Like It Hot. Ginger praises Brown as a wonderful actor and man. Well, that's all, Ruth. <clears throat> Come in, Mr. Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones, welcome. Come in, make your... Wait a minute, Sam. You're not going to get away with that. If you think you can take his dough and then kick him out, you're all wet. Who do you think you're talking to? To you, wise guy. You hooked him with a lot of phony talk, sold him the idea of putting all of his money in a turkey show, and now, like every other little cheap tin horn crook, you want to ease him out. That's just the kind of a trick I expected from a four-flusher like you. I should have known what kind of a guy you were when you hired me to help you hook him. Well, there's the money you gave me for smiling at him and making a fuss over him. Well, you can take it and lump it. I'm through. You're fired. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Brown, from Texas, arrives in New York full of enthusiasm. Right away at the station, con artists hit on him, but he rebuffs them all. He follows some cowboys into a restaurant but they are not exactly Texas-style cowboys. Broadway producer Joe Lehman, performed by Lou Cody, is amused by Brown and invites him to sit with him. Cody had a good career in the silence and transitioned well to sound, but then suddenly passed away in 1934 from heart disease. Then Cody's partner comes in and tells him the financier for his new play skipped town and left him broke. When Brown loudly states he has $20,000 cash, now he becomes a target for the desperate Cody. Cody's partner, Mac, played by Robert Gregg, a character actor in 107 movies, offers to take Brown to the Follies. Back at Cody's office, Ginger is his receptionist. When he sneaks in, Ginger says she quits because her paycheck bounced. Cody tells her if she helps hook Brown to invest, she will be paid tonight and get a $100 bonus. Ginger says, And to think, when I took this job, I thought I was working for a legitimate theatrical producer. Ginger agrees. She has no choice. Right away, she has to deal with the show's enraged star. At the same time, Brown is at the Follies with Greg. The show is kind of odd. When Brown gets to the office, he is immediately taken with Ginger. As she leaves, she keeps on looking at Brown and smiling. As Cody tells Brown the script, Ginger plays the piano for background. When finished, Cody offers Brown 49% of the play for $25,000. As Brown thinks it over, Ginger comes in the door. He counter offers with $20,000 all he has and Ginger is already troubled with what she's doing. Brown signs the contract. Brown dictates a letter for his mother to Ginger, and now Ginger is really troubled when she finds out this is all the money he and his mother have. The show goes on the road for a tryout. Ginger gets her $100 and quits because of what they are doing to Brown. Brown comes in with flowers for Ginger, 
and when he tells her how much she means to him, she decides to stay on. Time for the out-of-town premiere. Brown thinks it went well, but Cody had him in the rear with the electricians. Everyone else knows it stunk. Alone in his room, Brown is talking to a picture of Ginger, telling her he loves her, when Ginger hears from the door. Cody is working on a rewrite, and is very sharp and condescending with everyone, especially Brown. Ginger defends him. In a fury, Cody tells Brown his 49% gives him no say, and if he doesn't like it, get out. After Brown walks out, Ginger performs her best scene in the movie, a furious, fast-talking defense of Brown, with Brown listening from outside the door, and quits. Cody yells, You're fired! And Ginger replies, That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Brown tells Ginger he heard what she said, and must have fallen for him to have defended him like that. Ginger says she could never fall for a man who does not stand up for himself. Brown confronts Cody and demands he rehire Ginger, and then agrees to buy Cody out for $5,000. Ginger is stunned. Brown does not even have $5,000. Why would he do that? When he says it was the only way to get Ginger's job back, she is touched. The hotel employee comes in and in conversation mentions he wants to be a producer. Now Brown does the same routine Cody used on him, explaining the plot with Ginger playing piano in the background and he has a new partner. By the time their production year is opening, they are in trouble, out of money. With no money for costumes, Ginger finds a trunk with Shakespearean costumes, and Brown insists that is what they will wear, in a play about the Midwest in modern times. They look ridiculous, and the star quits, so Brown has Ginger play the lead. It's a smash hit, because the audiences think it's a farce. Now successful, a mobster comes in to shake down Brown, but Brown tells him to get lost. Later, the production calls to say Ginger is missing, and then the mobster calls to extort money. He has Ginger captive. Brown rushes down, knocks on the wrong door, and is confronted by a jealous husband. He finds the right apartment and walks into a room full of gangsters. Brown is very capable and frees Ginger, but then they get Brown and pull Ginger out of the cab. Brown takes the dumbwaiter down and comes out in the jealous husband's apartment. He fires away at Brown. Brown escapes into the hallway, where the gangsters have thrown down their guns because they thought Brown was shooting at them. Brown is too fast for them. They flee, and he chases them on horseback. With some fancy shooting, he captures them all. Later, Brown and Ginger are married, with three little browns in the carriage, and they live happily ever after. Please like and subscribe.